You've seen glimpses of what's behind me in my most recent videos. Let's take a walk through my 80s machine collection. Welcome back to 8-Bit Resurgence. You've undoubtedly noticed there's something going on behind me in the backdrop of my most recent videos. Today I invite you to take a short tour through the beginning of the personal computer revolution by viewing the machines I've lived with and collected from a very exciting and wondrous time in computing history. But before we start the tour, I want to give you a bit of background on the thoughts behind what I've done. You see, for years, I've kept the lion's share of these machines boxed up and stored away. What inevitably happens when a person does this is that the machines you've boxed and packed away don't see the light of day for years, eventually to be forgotten as a result of our busy lives. Sure, it happens, but there are times over the years when I would have liked to have enjoyed the machines only to discover I'm not sure where they are and how long it would take me to find them. For those of you who know or know of me, I've been developing new products for the various platforms for the better part of a decade now, and having a particular machine on hand only helps to expedite my development process. Something had to change. Wanting rapid access to my machines, safe storage, and the opportunity to enjoy the sight of them has culminated in what I'm going to show you today. In order to accomplish this, however, I needed a way to safely mount my machines to the wall. To do this, I needed machine-specific brackets for each make and model of computer. So the first task for me was to design custom mounts for each machine. Fast forward through the development and design process, what I ended up with were brackets that work as standalone presentation stands that are suitable for tabletop, shelf, or cabinet display, as well as secure and safe mounts that can be screwed to the wall. So enough talking about it. Let me take you through this wall I have in my workspace that I've adorned with all of the machines that have been and continue to be important to me. All right, so here is my wall. Um, all the machines that I've, I've mounted on the wall and I'm going to give you a quick tour through all of them. So let's start at the first machine that I mounted on the wall. And when I laid these things out, I started with a single machine and it was this VIC-20. Mounted that one and then I worked my way up and then across, always using levels to level the machines and the brackets. So they, everything remained nice and straight and square on the wall. So all of these machines, with the exception of the top one, these four machines use the same mounting bracket. And it's a bracket that I designed that follows the profile of the case and has a short, um, you know, it's about a one inch saddle that, uh, that this sits in. The center of gravity, when it's sitting in the bracket, is behind the machine and what that means is when I put the bracket or when I put the machine in the bracket the machine wants to fall against the wall so that keeps it secure in the bracket and it doesn't want to go anywhere so the this is a 64 G uh, silver label Again, this machine, you know, this one I will probably use because it's a PAL machine. This one, probably not so much because the video is really not that great being five pin and it's the earliest of the Commodore 64s. Um, video quality was very poor on the first ones. Commodore 16, I would definitely use. The top machine up there is a 64X from the... 90s early 90s it's actually a uh, windows or linux pc depending on what you install on it i believe i have linux on it right now and uh fun to use it's got a nice um, mechanical keyboard um, but it is a pc that was originally designed 
to uh, mimic the look of a bread bin. The next column over is my 64 C's. And although they look like they're all 60, the same 64 C, why would you have four on the wall? They are actually different machines. This first one is an Ultimate 64. Um, if using the Elite board. And it has, again, a unique bracket designed for the profile of this case. And again, when I put it back in, you'll see that it wants to naturally lean against the wall. This one is an iComp Reloaded Mark II. This one's a Mark I that will eventually get some of those transparent keycaps that I showed a couple videos ago. And the top one is an original... 64C with the short board and it's just an original machine. So that's this column of machines. Again, all use the exact same bracket. So that was nice that I only had to design the one. Moving on to the next one, we're starting to get into a little bit heavier machines. The 128, that uh, is a heavier machine, but uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, the the brackets are very robust. They're, I use a, a pretty high fill um, on it and they're well braced and quite substantial um, while still being rather minimal in that it only has about an inch on each side. But that seems to be plenty for holding these machines up. Again, this one, when I put it in, it wants to lean against the wall. These all work like that and as I had mentioned earlier, they all work as stands. So um, if you didn't want to um, hang them on the wall, you wanted to stand them on a shelf or in a cabinet, you could, you know, put them in a row. They take up a lot less space, but you can still display them and look at them. This again is another bread bin that I put here. And that's just the rainbow bread bin. Didn't have one over there, so I thought it'd be nice to put one there. This is the next machine that's rather unique and, and rather rare. It's a, a 64 GS. So this was Commodore's um, foray into the gaming console market that turned out to be a failure. The majority of these were um, torn apart. The boards inside, which is a, six, a 64 C short board, were taken out and repurposed and built into 64 C's at the time and the cases were thrown away. So there really aren't that many of these around. Um, this one made in West Germany. So it kind of dates it too. Um, that bracket again is a unique for the, the 64 GS. You see the, the profile of this machine. It's uh, quite square with all the chamfers on it. And so this this bracket is specifically designed for this machine and it locks it in very nicely. The top machine in this column is a plus four, as you can see. Again, it has the same profile, edge profile as that machine and uh, holds it nice and securely against the wall. It doesn't want to go anywhere. Next column over, we're getting into the Amigas and substantially heavier again than the 128. These machines have been on the wall for quite some time. I have not noticed any cracks or any failure whatsoever of these brackets. And I'm not expecting any because I did design them to take a lot of weight. So in this one, again, it, uh, as they all do, they have the profile of the machine and uh, they just, the, this particular design, however, I did um, include a back support into this bracket. So it supports the back of the machine here and here. And uh, you just pop it back in. And again, it wants to lean against the wall. Next is the Amiga 1200. Again, it has uh, a different, everything seems to have a different profile, even though it looks similar. Um, they are all slightly different. So when I, I'd have to create a new one for everyone. So 
What's nice, however, is that these two machines do share the same profile. So I was able to reuse them. They both naturally want to lean against the wall as well. Now we're getting out of the Commodore and into the Atari and other brands. There's a TI up there. I have the 1200, 800XL, 600XL, and a TI 99 4A. These two use the same brackets, and this one's slightly different. And of course, that one's different. What's kind of unique about the profile of these machines is they will not rotate out. They have a quite a unique square profile. All the other Commodores are round. This has a very square profile. So when they slot into their mounts, they can't even tip out. They do tilt back. And again, they also work as presentation stands. Um, very um, secure in the mounts. The final column is the Atari ST, this, this styling the 130XE, 65XE, and the Atari 4160 ST, which is the same profile as a 1040. This one is by far the heaviest of all of the machines. They, this weighs a lot and uh, also has a, a unique profile as these, these all do, but uh, fit in very nice and locks in very tight will not rotate forward which i purposefully designed to really lock this thing in against the wall because it is so heavy um, but it's hanging in there really nicely so that's my wall there are a couple more changes that are going to happen to this wall um, since completing the wall i did get a mega 65 so that Mega 65 is going to go in this position and I'm going to move the 1200 up. And in the Atari side, I have one more machine that I still need to design a bracket for. And that's the, um, the Atari XEGS. That was the machine with the, um, the separate keyboard. That's a little bit more of a complex design because it has to hold two units. Um, but that one's going to go up there and, uh, so this has been my wall of retro machines. I thoroughly enjoy watching or looking at them and having them handy so that I can, uh, I can use them whenever I want. Uh, the idea, as I had mentioned, was that I could take, take down a machine and use it whenever, whenever I want one or need one or need to build something for it. And this is the location here of the, the station where I'll be able to hook up any machine that I want. Right now it's not completely configured, but it will be soon. Um, some of the larger uh, machines won't be going on the wall, like this Commodore PET. And I have um, an Apple IIe. Those obviously are, are too big to go on the wall. I would just end up with drywall on the floor. So uh, they'll sit here and if I want to use uh, my super pad or an AD32, I can just swap them out from where I have them stored. But otherwise, everything is um, at my fingertips and accessible. So this is the wall. This has been a short journey through my prized collection of machines of the 80s. I thank you for watching through to the end of the video. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, it would be greatly appreciated. We're well on our way to a thousand subscribers. Click on the bell icon to be notified of new uploads. Likes and comments are also appreciated. We'll see you next time on 8-Bit Resurgence. Bye for now.